Welcome back to Smart Pack's Ask the Vet video series with Dr. Lydia Gray, Smart Pack staff veterinarian and medical director, and me, Smart Packer Sarah. Once again, we are answering the questions that were asked and voted on by viewers like you. So thank you guys for your horse health questions. And if you have a question answered in this video or in a previous video right. and you haven't gotten your gift card, that's right, you get a gift card, you can email customercare at smartpack.com and we'll get that taken care of for you. Perfect. You can also check out our horse health library where we catalog all of the old questions that have been asked and we actually break out each individual question so you don't have to watch the entire month. And I mean, I don't Why know why I say have to yeah. because this is a, this is a so pleasurable fun. and delightful experience. Um, but we break them out by each uh, topic so that if you do have a question, just take, do a quick check there to make sure it's not already been asked. Right. Because we don't pick those ones for voting mm -hmm. because we don't want to answer the same questions over and over. Because I might then, contradict myself. Well, you know, I mean, there's always that. <laughs> but then we don't want you guys to get bored. So check there first before you ask a question because we want you to have a chance yeah. to have your question featured. And without further ado, we're, we're going to get to the folks some questions. who do have their questions right. featured. So we're going to start with Emily, who emailed customercare at smartpack.com. And Emily asked, as you may know, there are these treats with sugary foods on them that have been in high demand lately. These treats have things on them like cereal, jelly beans, sprinkles, and etc. I know she's watched our videos before. <laughs> I know you will answer these questions with it all depends on the horse. Ooh. So I'm wondering if these treats are actually healthy for horses. If people do buy them, should there be a limit? Also, should there be things to look out for, like red flags if people do buy them? Lastly, My what goodness. are some treat <laughs> alternatives? So Ooh. I'm wondering secretly if okay. this question was submitted under a pseudonym by Smart Packer Jano. Oh, because maybe. she feels very strongly she does. about some of the sugary I, treats, but I'm excited to hear how you I feel. I feel a bit less strongly because I'm more of a um, everything in moderation mm -hmm. type of person. I rarely say no to, like never say never, I'm not that kind of person. So I looked at all of our treat offerings and um, found some good to say about everything. See? I think there are some better than others, and I think if your horse has a specific need, like the horse that jumps out at me is not the one so much that has a, a sugar limit, like his PSSM or his equine metabolic syndrome insulin resistance, but like a, a, a HYPP, mm. the, the um, hyperkinemic periodic paralysis, where you can't have a lot of potassium. Mm -hmm. That is one where they've set aside, they, they've, they've set strict numbers for how much grams of potassium you can have, a horse can have per meal, 33 mm -hmm. grams. So that's the kind of horse that I definitely would ask us exactly how much is in the treat and mm -hmm. find treats that are safe. Like I I like the um, Hilton Herbals. I don't think we have those. We don't. I I'm love my barn. our smart cookies because they were designed with the um, Easy Keeper, the horse that had to have low sugar in mind. Mm -hmm. They come in two really great um, flavors. Maybe a new one coming soon. Oh, really? Secret. Okay. And Surprise. so I like those. Um, there's functional treats, like way in the back, there's the hoof snacks that has biotin in it. Ooh, I did it. It's quite heavy. Um, there's, and then maybe the ones she was talking about were these paddock cakes. So we got some of these. These yeah. ones have these ones have a little banana chips on them, okay. but you'll see them sometimes. They have the little peppermint patties, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they have another one called s'mores. I think mm -hmm. yeah, they do have a s'mores. So maybe that's where she's getting to her candy type sugary treats. And um, it's not that they're uh, they're not bad. I mean, if if you can if your horse has no issues and they're fine and they like them and that's what he wants after a workout, I think great. Um, there's, I would encourage you to read all of the ingredients on any treat that you want to uh, feed your horse because it, it might not, don't, don't be um, sidetracked mm -hmm. by sugar mm -hmm. because sugar is not necessarily a, a bad thing. There's sugar in grass. There's sugar in grass, there's sugar in hay. Secrets out. Um, so, and think about how much the horse has taken in on its entire diet. So if you're eating, 20 pounds of hay at a 10%, let's say, non-structural carbohydrate rate, you're taking in pounds of sugar. Mm -hmm. So the little bit of sugar that you're getting from a treat or two. Now, that said, 
I know people, I was approached by people at Equine Affair or something, and they wanted to know, was it okay to feed their horse peppermints? And I was like, sure, you know, peppermints are a couple grams of sugar per mint. Except they were feeding the bag of peppermints. Mm. So that's what I mean by moderation. That's kind Your of a horse lot. does not need a bag. So no. my, my new treat for Newman is very, very high in sugar, but he gets one. What is it? It's a prune. Ooh. He thinks prunes are unbelievably good. I'm surprised because they're sticky and they're chewy, like consistency, mm -hmm. and I gave it to him sort of as a joke, and now if I come out without a prune, it does not go well for me. Do you get those individually so, wrapped ones so that you don't have to get too much on your hands? There's individually wrapped prunes? I'm going to change your oh, life. Oh, man. We're going to finish this video. We're going to hit the grocery oh, store. I'm going to change your I life. I would love that. It's really a sticky mess right now, yeah. so that'd be great. Yeah. But, though the point is, I don't say no to any treat. Um, just read the label. Read what's in it. Give the serving or less. You don't have to give the bag of treats. You can give one. So yeah, that's fine. All right. Our next question, also submitted by Emily, also emailed customer care at smartpack.com. Oh, the same Emily? I don't know oh. if it's the same Emily. Oh, okay. oh I'm getting word. I'm getting I'm getting word <laughs> in the earpiece I don't have. It is indeed the same Emily. Emily getting after it. Wow. Emily's getting two gift cards. All right, here we go. What is the difference of hoof hardener and hoof oil? Depending on what climate you live in and what season it is, dry, humid, spring, summer, fall, winter, etc. that's all of them. <laughs> when should I use hoof hardener and or hoof oil? Is it possible to use too much hoof hardener and or hoof oil? That's question one, no, it's second question. Where is the most beneficial place to apply hoof hardener and or hoof oil? Like the wall or the sole or the frog area. Okay, so it's when should I use which? Is it possible to use too much of either? Where is the best place to put them? Well, I have no idea. So I, <laughs> I ask, when it's a hoof question, you just have to know that I'm gonna to go to Danvers Child, who is our, the Smart Pack Hoof Health Consultant, and I just learned prefers the term certified journeyman farrier. Mm. Why wouldn't you? Even he's like, I don't know what a hoof health consultant is. So here's what he said. Hopefully he answered all those questions. Okay. Hoof dressings, which are oils, sealants, and hardeners. Those okay. are three types of hoof dressings, are generally applied with the intent of influencing moisture levels in the hoof. It's all of them. Their application will vary depending upon the manufacturer's guidelines. Most are applied to the wall some are applied to the sole, and a few to the frog. So just before we get further, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. If your horse is standing, this is the wall, this is the sole, <laughs> and then the frog is the little triangle. Well, we have, we have lots of pictures on our website, in there, case that wasn't There helpful. might be pictures. Uh, so let's go with the first one. Hoof oils are quite common and have been used seemingly forever. Uh, nevertheless, they're not always the greatest choice. They tend to attract and trap dirt, mm -hmm. moisture, fecal matter, and other ick, Ooh, it's ick a very technical term. to the hoof and can potentially encourage bacterial growth. Likewise, while they appear to be moisturizing the hoof, they generally don't penetrate and absorb well. And so for a hoof oil, we have the f -all brand, which comes with its own little applicator. The next one is hoof sealants. They're also quite common. They serve well to temporarily replace the host's natural varnish when it has been abraded by the environment or through maintenance. Mm -hmm. However, they are a sealant and a barrier, which potentially inhibit the natural internal-external exchange for moisture regulation. So for sealants, I brought out the um, Tough Stuff and this Kevlar Tough Hoof Guard Sealant. Okay. Those are two that we carry. All right. I've used this one before, the tough stuff. All right, and the number three is hoof hardeners are the newest on the scene, and they're quite different from oils and sealants. Hoof hardeners, yep. so hot right now. Despite the idea of them serving to harden the hoof, as their name implies, they actually serve to regulate moisture levels within the hoof through a process of cross-linking the keratin molecules within the hoof and supplying additional atoms and volume to strengthen the existing structures. That's okay. really cool. The like process that. requires regular and diligent application. However, it's important that no other topicals be used mm. that will disrupt or interfere with the cross-linking. So, and I've used this too, and I love it, the Keratex hoof hardener. Okay. And like he says, follow the directions. 
So I think a lot of what people don't think about when they think of their horse's hooves is I think people think your horse's hooves are like your fingernails and it's dead tissue. And it, it is, but it's also You can to still the point, influence it. You can influence it, and it is allowing moisture in and out, and it is allowing, I mean, to a certain extent, breathing. I was going to say breathe. It's still breathe. Yeah, uh -huh. and so it's if you think about, you know, with, in humans, if you get, like, um, acrylic nails or something put on, a lot of times people will have that, and then after a certain period of time, they're like, oh, I ruined my nails. I can't wear it anymore. Right. And you're like, well, how would you ruin your nails if it's dead tissue? So it is something that you want to be thoughtful about what you're putting on. And yep. as always, work with your farrier, ideally a certified journeyman farrier, yes. if you have access to one. Yes. Fantastic. That was very exciting. And you know I how you always ask if I'll say it in... Um, in Denver? Den yeah. I was going to bring it up when you got to the part that was in quotes, because I can hear oh, in my own ick? head, Denver's ick. It is, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I'm yeah. telling you. It's how it goes. What I was going to say is the word on the street is Ooh. that he might be coming back for some more videos. That would be so exciting. And his videos are extremely popular. They're very it's well true. done. They're, you can learn so much. I mean, some folks have Kardashians. We have Danvers Child, so. It's true. Oh, my gosh. I'm excited. Equally famous. I am excited also to find out why Kardashian is written down in your notes. That was why. Because I saw it. That was why. And I was very curious. <laughs> I wanted to remember to say that we have our own. Yeah. And he is named Danvers Child. And he's a delight. Uh, so you can find all of Danvers' old videos in the Horse Health Library that we talked about earlier. Our next question was submitted by Helen, and Helen also emailed customer care at smartpack.com, and this one's a long one. Okay. So Helen is wondering, my spotted saddle horse has large areas of white hair with pink skin underneath. His hair is thick enough over most of his body to protect his skin somewhat from the sun. However, his face is very prone to sunburn and peeling. That's a bummer. Yep. Human sunscreen works, however, most require reapplying often, and it's difficult to do that regularly. Yeah, that's fair. I have used an extended nose fly mask to attempt to screen some of the bright sun off, but he's a bit of a Houdini. If he decides it needs to be off, it comes off. What's the best treatment for sunburn? I've had some luck with thick baby rash creams with zinc oxide, like mm -hmm. desitin, right. uh, but he will rub his face against things to try to scrape it off, abrading the sunburn area in the process, which sounds terrible. Yeah. Poor guy. All right, so what's the best treatment for sunburn? And then any other maybe preventative tips that we can help her Well, with? I did um, find some things. Uh, let's see, these, so these. So there are products that we sell that, like I, all I did to find them was type in uh, sunburn or UV or something, one of these words. And these products came up and, and I was thinking, but this is a fly spray. However, it has a sunscreen in it. Mm -hmm. So this is nice. Even this bath by Vetrolin has a sunscreen in it. Mm -hmm. We talked about this last time. This is really trending. Um, and I don't know if it says what, you, what SPF it has, but this goes on, I guess, really well from the reviews on the website. And um, you might want to try it. If he doesn't like creams because you can feel them. They're heavy mm -hmm. and greasy and yeah. you, f you can feel them. Maybe he'll like a lighter, um, li more liquid, more watery that you can actually not spray on his face but maybe wipe on his face. Mm -hmm. So that's an idea. Um, uh, there is a fly mask. There's a new fly mask over there. That's the Noble Outfitters one that has a, a longer nose. We have a couple that have longer noses that can cover the white at the end, the snips. And the nice thing about this one is that it has the longer nose to cover the skin, but it leaves the nose. nostrils open. So you know some horses when they get the longer, nope, nose. I have it upside down. I don't know how Ears. horses' heads work <laughs> is what we just learned. I think, do we cut that part out or do we leave it in? I, I think we should leave it in. I think we should leave it in because horses are hard and I have embarrassed myself. So. But why doesn't anyone cut the noses out? Because my horse Oop. hates the one that covers his nose. I will say well, that. Well, so does this one, it comes off? It does come off, okay. which is nice, so that you okay. can have it be a little bit more flexible for yeah. your horse. Because like mine wears a grazing muzzle, and when he wears the muzzle, I have one fly mask without a nose, and then when he doesn't wear the muzzle, I have a fly mask with the nose, which was gonna be my suggestion. It, crazy as it sounds, for horses that take off their fly masks, mm -hmm. or that, ha that other horses take off their fly masks, what if you put on a grazing muzzle? Oh. Because it covers the area. 
to, oh, so instead of the fly mask, yeah. you use a grazing muzzle yeah. to help shield it and from the sun. And you can use it as a grazing muzzle if you want. The holes are generally about this big, or you can just cut out the whole bottom. Oh. So he's got something that covers his face that's a little bit harder to take off, maybe. Yeah. And there's different brands of fly masks and different brands of muzzles, and you have to experiment a little bit. Some fit better than others. It all depends on your um, horse's head shape. There's that phrase, it depends. Yeah. I guess yeah. I do use it. That's okay. Yeah. It also depends if you're putting it on upside down. That'll, you know, that'll you, impact you it. You may have, by doing that, found a n brand new method to prevent sunburn. You know? So, that's, who knows? A, that's what I'm who here knows? for. Um, I like imagining, though, the grazing muzzle with the bottom cut out. It would look like a horse, like when people wore like those old timey barrels with straps as clothes. A little like, bit, a little bit like, like that. That's what yeah, we're yeah. Gonna be it having. could look very strange, but I mean, your horse may thank you. Um, I did do some research on this as far as there's three ways to keep the sun from affecting you, whether you're a horse or human, and that is. A, a chemical block like these products, so mm -hmm. you put something on, which she says her horse is not keen on. Um, a physical block, so mm -hmm. for horses it would be, you know, the um, a face mask with a long nose, a grazing muzzle, or I even brought a fly sheet that has some embedded UV protection for people, like a hat or long sleeves, um, or just uh, get out of the sun. Mm. So shade. Turn out at night. Tur or turn out at night. So there's some other options that don't involve any products or any clothing that your horse has said no to, like a small child, no, no, no. Um, do those things. Once the, the sunburn is there though, and so what do you do? Um, like people, cold water, mm -hmm. ice, those feel really good. So hosing, hydrotherapy is uh, always appropriate. Um, if there's some broken skin, then a, a topical might be appropriate. Mm -hmm. I would probably, if skin is broken because it's peeled or sloughed or blistered or oozed, and we don't have to go any farther with the terms. Um, if that's happened, I might want to contact my vet and say, mm. I've got open skin. And that treating open skin is different than treating just pink, red, inflamed, swollen skin. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the cutoff there. And get them involved, and maybe they, because they see so many different horses. I mean, you have an N of one, they have an N of thousands. Maybe they said, you know what, I learned this from my other client, or I, I've tried this on various horses, and this seems to be the most successful. I would agree that the Desitin is a really good choice. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely bring the vet in the loop, because some sunburns, as you know, people can get uh, really severe, and, mm -hmm. and you might need, you might even need systemic therapy, like, like steroids or antibiotics or something, in mm -hmm. which case you would for sure need your vet to yeah. be involved. Yeah, so the treatment kind of depends on how bad it is. Okay, I'm gonna pick up my papers because okay. I got very excited. I know, uh, this, I got this very was an exciting topic. With huh? my upside down fly mask snafu. <laughs> so we're on to our next question, okay. and I can't wait to see what I misinterpret next because it's gonna, oh, we got some good stuff back here. This one could be tricky. Yep, okay. <laughs> Uh, so this one was submitted by Sarah P. on YouTube, which used to be my initials, SP. Yes. But no longer. I, I have different initials now that I'm married. But Sarah, I like your question. I would like to know if it's true that a horse shouldn't be rinsed immediately after a hard workout or if rinsing them in cold water or hot water makes any difference. I love this one. I, you know me. I love an old wives' tale. Oh, like and a good horse I want to add an a, addendum to her wives' tale. What I heard in addition to this, because I have heard this, is that, and tell me if you heard this, never put water on the top and the bottom of the horse. So if it, like, if you're going to get the horse wet in the top, make sure there's bottom doesn't get wet. I've never heard that no? one. No, that's amazing. I don't amazing. Even know where I heard that. How, how, how are you going to go about achieving this goal? I have no idea. <laughs> and so both of them are kind of uh, misinformation or old wives tales. You absolutely can put water on a hot horse. In fact, you should, and it should be cold. Mm. I think the worry was cold water was going to either cause cramping, mm -hmm. uh, spasms, tying up, or maybe even colic. Or like a hot glass out of the oven if you rinse it under cold water and then it just shatters. Typically horses do not shatter. Okay, so fly masks <laughs> with the ear holes and then horses don't shatter. Yeah, I'm that's what so we're much. learning today. Um, we did a work in preparation for the 96 Atlanta Olympics because mm -hmm. Atlanta in August, wow, big deal. humidity. Yeah. And they found that putting ice, in fact, on these horses 
they came in from, back in the day we were the long format of eventing, they came in from uh, miles and miles of being out on the cross country and roads and tracks and stable chase, cooled them down, because they would come in at 104, 105, 106, dangerously hot temperatures. So you had to get their core temperature, core body temperature down quickly, and ice was the way to do it. When you do that, of course, it's apply the ice water from like big metal watering troughs, you know, just buckets, psh, um, scrape. Because as soon as that water hits that horse, it gets hot. Mm -hmm. If you leave that water on, then it, it actually makes the horse hotter, it insulates them. So when I see people with a hot horse putting a wet towel on them, mm. I will actually, I don't often go talk to people if they don't ask, yeah. but when I see that I know how dangerous it is, I will walk up and talk to them and say, please don't do that, it's, it's, it's very dangerous. Um, at the Atlanta Olympics, I just found this fact out today, I was just reminiscing, um, they brought in 100 tons of ice. They had just 80, for the horses. Just for the horses. Wow. Just for the cross country day, they had uh, 85 cooling misting fans, which are mm -hmm. big fans set up with coil uh, hoses around them with h holes in them, and then they would run water through. And so when they ran the water through and the fan was on, it would put out a m nice mist. And they had these tents, uh, cover coveralls. I forget what they're called. Oh, um, the white ones. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe someone knows, but they'd walk the horses through, and they'd have fans on both sides, and it was it was wonderful. And we were like, "Can we walk through there?" <laughs> so absolutely, do not be afraid of putting water on your horse. I only use tepid water on Newman because, of course, he's like, uh, "It's too cold." Right. So, but I don't ever get him hot enough that he needs to be cooled off. Trust me. So, Newman will work for prunes. He will work for prunes. Uh, our last question is submitted by Olive with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight question marks. Oh dear. So she really Olive wants to know. And Olive on YouTube is wondering, should I wrap my horse's legs when going on a long trip in the trailer? And she asked this question with just one question mark. So she's asking the word Olive in her name. Olive. <laughs> but just like very casually. Should I wrap right. my horse's legs when going on a long trip in the trailer? So I'm going to give this to you. Okay. That seems oh. like I'll do a great job with God. it based on the last <laughs> round. Um, and then, then put the other stuff close to me. Okay. So um, I would like to say it depends because apparently <laughs> that's what I always say. Um, if you have a horse that has not worn either shipping wraps like these or standing wraps like these, this is just you know, a cotton pillow wrap and then standing wraps over it, mm -hmm. like like Pony Club says, how to mm -hmm. make a wrap. Mm -hmm. If it's a young horse or horse has not worn wraps, I would discourage you from putting them on in a trailer because there's enough going on and if they move, shift, they're tight, they're not used to them, they can actually move around more, become fractious, hurt themselves, kick until things get loose, and it's it's probably doing more harm than good. Yeah. And it, as a vet, I took an oath about not doing harm. So, but if you have a horse that is a seasoned traveler, goes all the time, some people might say, oh, he's used to it, no need to wrap. However, you never know when someone's gonna pull in front of you or when mm -hmm. you have to make a sudden stop or you almost missed your turn and you, know, you do it yourself. And it's not that the trailer has sharp things on the inside. Everyone knows to check your trailer. It's that in trying to balance himself, your horse may step on himself, mm -hmm. move a leg over, move a foot over. So that's what you're trying to protect. And these go all the way to the bottom. So they protect the, um, the hoof, the heel bulb, the, the fetlock. So these are not for the ears? No, and you are correctly holding them in the Thank right you. position. Wouldn't it be great? The were, name Ooh. was really helping me out oh, in terms right, of knowing which yeah. way was up. But I do. These know are the hind ones. What this stuff is? They cover the hocks. You can see. Yep. So it's yep. important to cover from the ground to just over the hocks in the back and over the knees in the front. Then all your uh, joints are covered. Your hooves, the cannon bones, all the important handle with care parts. There you go. All <laughs> those parts. 
Um, some people, I didn't bring any, but some people put uh, bell boots on, on mm -hmm. the, to protect the, the heel bulb. So maybe that's all you want to do mm -hmm. is just um, the bell boots. For when he's positioning his yeah, feet. Yeah, so that you, you don't just, want him to just don't. Because those kind of injuries right at the heel bulb can take a long time yeah. to, to heal. And can be pretty painful and can put your horse well, out of work yeah, if he's uncomfortable if they're, when they're walking, you think about the motion of walking and it just opens it up every time. It's why kind of scratches are painful. Um, I also brought some other things. She didn't ask, but... I like a good tailor up Ooh, because I hate right. when my horse comes out of the trailer and then his tail is either rubbed and it looks like, like a this. Boot brush. Oh yeah, <laughs> or or he's rubbed the hair out and I'm like, well that's gross, super. And then some people and I've never used one, but some people are head bumper fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna, I was so excited that I was gonna get to tell you. Oh my God, there's the wrong a little way. Um, so yeah, so ears, ears, not mm -hmm. eyes. Sure. Um, I'm not because unless you know your horse is one of those that like you open the back and undo the front and then they run out and throw up their heads yeah. or whatever. To me, it's, it's, this has a more potential for harm in, in, because it could catch on things and it makes their brain hot. And, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I'm not a fan of this unless you know that your horse needs one. So I think that that was in one of the things that you said at the beginning that I think is really, really helpful and that a lot of people don't think of is when, if you're shipping your horse for the first time, going in the trailer is a whole new experience. You don't want also having scary things strapped to your horse's legs to be a totally new experience that he's going to have and deal right. with in a new place for the first time. And I so, would tell you that I, I use shipping wraps because I'm too lazy to put on bandages anymore, but. Even Most now, people call these shipping boots. Shipping boots. Um, when I put those on Newman, and he's had them on for 12 yeah. years now, he still does the moonwalk yeah. thing, you know? So even he has to adjust his way of going. And yeah. so you absolutely what you said. You don't want a horse who's never had these on. They're going to, like, try to shake them off, and then they get frantic. They cannot get these things off. I mean, I've had horses, like, get loose and run around and yeah. hurt themselves and hurt property. So if you really want to put them on, then teach your practice. horse to use them, practice yeah. Yeah, before the trip. In low stress situations too, because there's no time, it, trying something for the first time with your horse at four o'clock in the morning in the dark, Never not yeah. recommended. <laughs> Sounds so, like we, we both had that. We've, yeah, we've had that, had that experience. Yeah, so the, I think the moonwalking though, pretty universal. We actually did it in the uh, If Horses Were People, so maybe Nels will throw a clip of that in here and we can see what it looks like if a, if a human, if a human wears it. shipping boots. Excellent. So those were all of the questions that we have this time. Thank you guys so much for submitting such great questions. They gave us really interesting things to talk and about and fun products to, to show, show yeah. sometimes correctly. And you can submit your questions for next time to see what we get to talk about. Up until September 1st, use hashtag AskTheVetVideo when you're submitting your question out in the social media world, so like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, on YouTube as well so that we can keep track of all of those mm -hmm. questions. That's exactly right. And you can also use the brand new questions form at smartpack.com oh, slash ask the vet questions. Is it it's up. Super. I mean, right now while we're shooting this video, it's not, but I have so much faith that by the time the video goes live, I'm putting this in and we're not cutting it out okay. because we're not going to cut that fly mask part out because I know <laughs> Nell's like that too much. So once you've submitted your questions, don't forget to vote. You can vote on YouTube, Twitter, or our blog, where you can vote as many times as you want. You can also get in like Emily and Helen did and email your questions to customercare at smartpack.com so that if you're emailing in to place an order, you can also ask your question at the same time. Oh, good idea. If your question was answered in this or previous videos, don't forget to email customercare at smartpack.com or DM us on YouTube so that we can get you your gift card because we want you to be able to go buy something awesome. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep an eye out for the voting videos and make sure your question gets to the top. Thanks as always for watching and have a great ride.